and we're out for the first walk of the day, uh, go ahead and click below if you're interested in free consultation at a grid gym. But hi, <laughs> um, you might wonder why I've got this thing on my face. Well, this prompted the video actually because enough people are having a lot of trouble sleeping right now. And I figured I'd give you my some kind of breakdown of how I put it all together so that because sleep is like sacred. I mean, sleep is where you get all the benefits. You, know, you actually don't lose weight or gain muscle or gain strength or or improve your balance or or uh, get the mental acuity or the endurance or the cardiac effect or anything during your workout. You get it while you're recovering from the workout. You get all those benefits during the recovery portion. The magic happens in the recovery. The stress, the imposed stress is what happens when you're doing the workout. So. So anyway, why do I have this this thing on my nose? Because I broke my, no my nose so many times playing sports that I actually got to a point where I couldn't breathe out of it. I spent nine months, uh, I, I got all the way through the football season. The last time that I broke it actually, um, I went in for a tackle. How's it going? I went in for a tackle and my chin strap busted and my helmet came down, smashed my whole face. Um, I had this big scar across the top of my nose. It was really Anyway, couldn't breathe out of my nose for the rest of the season. And then uh, I didn't want to skip all the training, which is really stupid looking back because I had to do it at some point. But I didn't want to miss all the training, so I waited a few months. And it was just a mouth breather the whole time. So dumb. Anyway, I got my nose. Got the surgery on my nose so I could breathe again. But sometimes it still gives me a little trouble. So anyway, putting one of these in your nose can make a big difference uh, when you sleep at night and when you're doing other things. Usually I take it off in the morning, but I figured I'd keep it on. You know, because it looks so pretty with it on. Anyway, it's just something that's really easy, uh, super inexpensive, uh, that you can improve your sleep with. Some other things that we do uh, is uh, blue light glasses. I don't know if they actually work or not, but if it's placebo effect, I don't really care. If it works, it works. You know, so I'll keep doing it. Um, not getting uh, super late night food is probably a good idea. Um, and then setting a time where you're going to go to bed every single night is one of these things we talk about on this channel pretty often. It's just setting, like most people have an alarm to wake them up in the morning. So why wouldn't you have an alarm that says, Hey, it's time to go to bed. Going to bed is probably more important than what time you, what time you go to bed is probably more important than what time you wake up in the morning. So much activity going on out here. All oh, these people watch me talk to myself. How's it going? I'm doing well. Uh, so if you want to get better sleep, create a consistent sleep schedule. And then you have to treat yourself like Pavlov's dog. So Pavlov rang the bell, gave him the food, dog salivated, ate, right? Did that over and over again until eventually rang the bell, dog salivated. No food was necessary, right? So you can do the same thing. So I want to get to the point with myself where if I'm stepping through the door, in my bedroom, I'm like, oh man, I'm tired. It's time to go to bed. Um, so the alarm clock goes off at night, says, hey man, it's time to start moving towards bed. And then, and then, uh, how's it going? And then, what's going on here? So the alarm clock will go off, tell me, hey, it's time to start moving towards bed. That, that ignites a series of steps. So it's like whatever yours is, brush your teeth, read for 15 minutes, go meditate, you know, do whatever you're going to do. And then you do that routine every single time because that's like your pregame. It gets you in the mindset that you're going to go to sleep, right? And then you step into your room. Also, turning the lights down late at night. If you don't want to do the blue light glasses thing, you could do both. Just turn the lights down late at night. Um, paying attention to what kind of show you're watching at the end of the night, if that's what you do do is probably a good idea, too. If you're watching something that's, like, super action-packed, like we were talking about the movie The Rock the other day, <laughs> uh, easily Michael Bay's best film. Um, anyway, uh, that is something that you can do. There's a bunch of different things, um, but setting an alarm clock before you go to bed, not eating super late at night, um, maybe using blue light glasses, putting one of these things in your nose so that you can breathe better, uh, taking a zinc and magnesium, maybe some 5-HTP or gamma aminobutyric acid, that was about full. Um, could help uh, meditating before you go to bed. 
uh, meditating in the morning, uh, making sure that you're waking up. When you do hit your alarm, when your alarm does go off, you actually do get up. And the best way to do that is just to put it outside of your bedroom. So one of the things I do to make sure that, because um, I'll just sleep right through the stupid thing, or because uh, I, t- I talk in my sleep, I walk in my sleep, it's probably annoying to everybody else, not annoying to me. But, um, but I'll make sure that the alarm clock is actually outside of my bedroom so that I have to leave the place that I do all my sleeping to turn off the alarm because once you take about 10, 12 steps, you're probably going to be awake enough to keep it going. So that's something that's really easy to do and make you wake up. And then you do not go back to bed no matter what. Uh, make sure that throughout the day you're not taking over a 40-minute nap. If you are going to take a nap, make it 20 or 40 minutes. Do not go over an hour. Uh, if you're going to go over an hour, you might as well go four hours. And if you're going to go four hours, you might as well just go to sleep. Also, there's only two things that happen in the bedroom. One of them is sleep, and you make it that way. So there's no food, there's no TVs, there's no cell phones, there's no electronics. Maybe you have an alarm clock there, but that's it. And you keep it very, very, very simple. Um, because if you're imposing the stress on your body during your workout, it's extremely important. It's extremely important that you get the recovery. I can't tell you how many of these programs I see where uh, they're, they're like, you're going to run five miles a day, every day, and you're supposed to lift four days a week, and you're also supposed to do high-intensity interval training for an hour or three times a week. And it's just too much stuff for one, but also you cannot be overworked. Your body cannot be overworked. It can only be under-recovered. When the original Bulgarian method was that you were going to train three times a day, And that method works so well that it's still used today. The thing that people are missing is how much those guys were sleeping. They were sleeping for like 16 hours a day. And they did go crazy. Like their their brain shut off before their body shut off. Uh, The solution to that was that they needed a social aspect. They just weren't getting that. And so once the social aspect got got put in place, then it was pretty clear that this was a a, uh, sustainable way to train. But elite athletes still train this way. They wake up, they work out, and they do their thing. They eat at one before or after, maybe both. And then they go back to sleep, and then they repeat it again in the middle of the day, and they repeat it again at night, and then uh, then they go have their social component, and then they go to sleep. So it's a, it's a possibility. But the point of me saying that was that your body cannot be overworked. It can only be under-recovered. It's because most people don't put enough emphasis on the recovery. Most of us look at our, uh, don't add up the stress that we're going through. You know, you got a job, you got a couple kids, maybe you got a bunch of grandkids that you're hauling around. Maybe you're just not 19 anymore. Um, you know, maybe your body doesn't differentiate between stress. So if you have a fight with your significant other, you do a bunch of biometrics in one day or a really hard workout, uh, or, you know, something didn't quite go your way. It's, your body's not going to respond the same way as if you were going on two weeks of good rest and good nutrition. So it's something to consider. The better the sleep that you have, the more sacred that you keep that space, the better off you're going to be. But anyway, we cannot emphasize sleep enough. It's extremely important. It's, it's, I don't know. I'm like, wearing one of these looking like a goofball. But anyway, if you'd like to work with one of us, uh, I can't promise better sleep. But we hear that all the time, that when people start, they're just like, man, I've never slept this good in years. It's like, yeah, because your body felt like crap. It couldn't get to sleep because it couldn't get comfortable because it was all it was all worked up. You didn't have any, you, you never could blow the steam off the top and never exerted, or you weren't exerting the the, uh, the uh, force that your body wanted to exert. Your body doesn't want to stay still. It wants to move. you got to give it that opportunity. But anyway, I hope that you click the button below, work with us. Uh, give us a chance to prove it. It's If 10 weeks go by and you're like, I don't feel better than I did 10 years ago, well, no harm, no foul. We'll give you all your money back. Um, you know, We do this because we want to help make us prove it. But anyway, I'm Adam Reese. If you don't know who I am, I've been a good gym for the past 12 years. I've been a coach for 15. I started doing this in 2007. Um, before that, I was a collegiate athlete, I guess. I don't know if that's an accomplishment or not, but I had a lot of other coaches, I guess is what I'm saying there, and um, I've continued to hire coaches, continued to uh, get better at this thing. I'm an extremely obnoxiously curious person. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. Lots of times it gets me in trouble. Super obsessive. I was obsessive about this stuff for like 20 years. Um, 
I'm still <laughs> still nutty about it. Maybe not as much, but you don't just have an epiphany every week anymore after you kind of get to a master level. But anyway, if you're curious about working with us, go ahead and click the link below. Let us prove it. We'll do a full consultation. It'll be absolutely free. Uh, we just want to help. But make sure that put that sleep package together. You know, you start stacking some of these stuff that some of the stuff that we talk about on this gym, you start stacking them up and good things are gonna happen. You know, you start eating your protein, your vegetables first when each meal, you start getting to bed at a decent hour, you start waking up at a decent hour, you start getting consistent with your workouts. And it's amazing. You put just these littlest tiniest things, you put like five of them in place and all of a sudden all of the other ones just start to trickle in, into uh, or cascade into something bigger and bigger. But anyway, second walk first walk of the day. I gotta hurry up. But make sure to get some sleep. If this video helps you out, please comment down below.